Hi everyone, my name is Karina Yang, and today I'm going to talk about data visualization and D3. What is D3? D3 stands for Data Driven Documents. It's a simple JavaScript library that allows us to bind data to DOM elements. So what does that really mean? Um, so once you bind data to DOM, we can apply data driven transformation. Data visualization is a process of mapping data to visuals. You put the data in, you get visual properties out. So maybe bigger numbers make taller bars, or special categories will trigger brighter colors. The mapping rules are up to you once you bind the data to you, what you want to render. So why do you want to use D3 library? Um, it's super flexible, and every change you make can be data driven. So when we bind our data, input values to elements in DOM, binding is just like attaching or associating data to specific elements. So later, when you reference those values, um, you can apply different mapping rules. And the DOM elements become mappable like, after you bind the data. So you can basically b use D3 to build high quality and interactive, interactive visualization for any kind of website. Um, D3 uses built-in methods, and these are some of the most important methods that D3 uses. Um, there's select, data, enter, append, attribute, and style. Um, I'm going to talk about the first four methods because um, you can just use those to render like a simple bar chart. So we're going to create this bar chart. I'm going to go through a very simple line of code. Um, and so you'll see that I have the preset data set and we'll loop through each item in the data and then set the value as the height of each bar. And ta-da, like you can do this with only six lines of code. So first, you select the parent element body, and then select all of the children um, paragraphs. But you can name them anything. Um, like I'll show you how that is done in the next chart. And um, the data function binds our data set to our selection, and each element in our data array would correspond to the DOM element paragraphs. And the empty enter function selects the newly added data points, and append um, is what comes next. So you append paragraphs to match the data points to create the div elements with attributes that we are adding the next line. And um, in the attribute, you want to define like what you want it to render. So bar is a simple um, inline block with the width pre-specified in CSS file that I'll show you on the next slide. And then finally, with style, you can specify the height as value in the data. Um, notice that it's an anonymous function that takes the height, and I'm simply adding the string pixel um, so that height can be rendered correctly when, I, when we compile the HTML. So the code looks a lot like jQuery. Um, data in D3 is always in array form, so you can apply method, like method chaining really easily. That means we can set attributes, styles, click events um, on the multiple DOM elements all at the same time. So D3 is really smart about handling data, so you, it will accept an array of numbers, strings, objects, or JSON. Um, and I'm going to talk about these um, different adding interactions to our selection. Um, there are handy built-in D3 JavaScript events um, in the library, such as hover, click, mouse over, and mouse out. And um, if you weren't using these, you'd have to write JavaScript functions, um, the event capturing functions such as like on and then wrap those events and bind data in the anonymous inline function. Or you can just use these uh, built-in functions, like very straightforward. So now we're going to add some interaction to our bar chart that we created earlier. Um, this is like how you uh, use a mouse enter um, event. So I wrote it so that when you enter the bar area, the text appears. Um, and then we are capturing the selection by using the keyword this, and it turns this subselection into block. And um, so we had previously set the display to block, and then this is the corresponding mouse leave event, where um, if I lift the mouse off the block, um, the text will disappear. So I'll show you how this is rendered. So this is the code that I wrote earlier on this panel. By the way, this is the JS Fiddle. It's really a um, handy website. You can 
put in the HTML tag up in this window. You notice like how I'm not writing any elements here whatsoever, but I'm purely writing JavaScript function to render this chart. And uh, my CSS file is very small. Like all I'm doing it here is specifying like what the bar, each bar is going to look like. So for the mouse enter event, when I hover over to this chart, it's going to render the text. And once I leave it, it goes back. And that's the same happens with these bars. Um, and the next, I want to show you, so this is a very simple chart, but like, again, this is a very easy compilable code that anyone can learn to write in like 30 minutes or less to render a bar chart. So imagine the kind of things you can do, like a fancy example will be, you can, this is purely also JavaScript that you can write um, in conjunction with a little bit of CSS. And it's another example you can do. Um, and we've seen like on political websites, on New York Post, um, to like rendering data with the text, is, you can do it in a very fancy way using like um, less coding. So oh, let me go back to the slide. So here are some of the resources I used. Um, this is the official D3JS library that you can learn about examples and tutorials. And Team Treehouse and Dashing D3 are the tutorials I used to create this bar chart. And then lastly, uh, my Bostocks blocks have really good examples with the source code that you can actually copy and paste. Um, I recommend like playing with a little bit of functionality in D3 and implementing it in the projects that you're using now, just to see like how easy it is to implement the codes that you want to render the data. Thank you.